Welcome to another episode of Tuesday Tea with me, your host, Sweet D. And you guys listen, today with me is Sue Donaldson. And she is just a beacon of light. She is incredibly lovely. And I have had the opportunity to work with her as my client. Hi, Sue. Thanks for being here. Hi, thank you. You're so sweet. You were such a boon to me and my well, not knowing what to do next. And I, anybody who works with you knows that. So praise God. Praise God you know, in all <laughs> things. Well, listen, Amen. I'm just going to go ahead and read your bio because I don't want to miss a thing because you are an incredibly dynamic lady and you have a lot going on. So let's get to it. Speaker, author, Sue Donaldson and her husband, Mark, live in San Luis Obispo, California. Sue taught high school English part of the time in Brazil with Wycliffe Bible translators. She and her husband, Mark, have raised three daughters, beautiful daughters, who keep mm -hmm. them at the bank and on their knees. Oh, Sue yes. <laughs> Sue loves connecting people to one another, to God and to his word, and has been speaking for the last 20 years or so with long pauses for babies, diapers, and soccer pasta parties. <laughs> She blogs at Welcome Heart, Knowing and Showing the Heart of God, and hosts a weekly podcast called Make It Count, Living a Legacy Life. Sue's books include Come to My Table, God's Hospitality and Yours, Hospitality 101, Lessons from the Ultimate Host, which is a 12-week Bible study, and Table Mentoring, a simple guide to coming alongside. And she also, you guys, on top of all that, she also writes for the Joyful Life magazine, which I have a beautiful copy, which you gifted me, Sue. And it's just, oh, if you guys don't know this magazine, it is so beautiful. I will absolutely put a link to it in the show notes. But Sue, hi. Hi, <laughs> thank you. Okay. I think I have that long list because I'm so old, but I'm 69 and fine. <laughs> you are, you're a lovely lady. <laughs> Listen, Sue, I can't glaze over your podcast. I don't want to glaze over anything here because you are so close to hitting 100 episodes. Yep. And that is so significant in the mm -hmm. podcasting world. On average, people will upload five and then give up. No, That's why? Crazy. Yep. I'm not kidding because they don't receive the right response okay or downloads or whatever, but I have to tell you, and not to take the credit, but I got the opportunity to help Sue set up her podcast. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I knew that from day one of you really wanting to learn the ins and outs of podcasting, that you were going to be wildly successful with it. And so truly, and, and honestly, an inspiration to me, <laughs> I started wow. my podcast after yours. Well, Dominica, years ago, some younger friends, I have lots of younger friends because my daughters, they said, Sue, we don't read blogs. We listen to podcasts. I go, well, I don't know what those are. And I'm too busy to think about it. And then when I learned um, about you through Lisa Lewis, another podcaster, and you helped me so much with my website and you said, you need to be a podcaster. I, again, I said, what's that? And the fact that I wouldn't even start until I had six in the can, is that what they call it? You know, I wanted to have six or maybe even 12 recorded because I was just too nervous that if I don't have that many done, plus I was heading into Christmas, everybody's busy at Christmas. Right. So Dominica, you were my third um, recording and I praise God for you and for that. I just keep doing it. It's kind of amazing to me too. Well, the content, fun. The, it is fun, right? So it's fun, yeah. but also the content yeah. you put out is incredibly invaluable. I mean, every week I I'll just read the headline of, or the title of your podcast. And like, how does she come up with all this? And you're just incredibly natural. And if you're not familiar with Sue's podcast, highly recommend it. And Sue, I don't know if you know this, but I was looking at some podcast analytics earlier today, your podcast ranks in the very top 10 globally, globally. Okay. For all podcasts in the world, you are ranked top 10% out of 2.6 million podcasts. Did you know that? Are you telling me the truth? I'm here. telling you the truth. I have How screenshots come? to prove it. Oh, How man. come? <laughs> I'll have to send Listen, it to my husband. <laughs> because you stay the course. You stay mm. the course and you listen to me. <laughs> yes, that's true. And you help me. But, but truly, I mean, that there is a huge significance in that. There's not many people that I know that get to that level in the podcasting world. So congratulations. Well, I know that the market is what you call it gutted or glutted where it's just so glutted. full. 
flooded. Every flooded. There we go. Get all the G's. And I thought, well, why start? It's kind of like, do you write a book? Everybody has already written on it. You get discouraged and you compare yourself. Mm. But then people remind me they haven't written it the way you would, or they wouldn't podcast the way you do. And I'm a natural conversationalist. And so that that's why podcasting is fairly simple. I still get a little nervous sometimes if I hadn't haven't recorded something in a while before I approach it, but I wasn't nervous today because I love you. Oh, well, good. I'm glad you're not nervous. Always <laughs> wanting to provide the comfortable environment. <laughs> Always. Okay. So podcast aside, I have to ask you why hospitality? Because hospitality has been this overall theme ever since I met you has been this driver behind welcome heart and what you do. Why did you decide to focus on hospitality? Well, to go way back um, at my church, the director of the college group came to the, some of the women and said, you know, we have these young college girls and they weren't necessarily raised in a Christian home and they are faith-based home. And they, they want to grow up to be good, great women. And could some of you women meet with them or mm. talk about certain topics? And so the director of women's ministries asked me and a friend, to do one night a workshop on hospitality because we both uh, were comfortable having people over. And we thought, okay, so we got together and we had a big chalkboard. Those were the days we had chalkboards and we listed 17, I think about reasons, about 17 reasons as to why we don't do hospitality when we don't. And I noticed while we were writing them that most of them had to do with the big P pride because we are too proud to either be transparent with their homes or with their cooking or whatever it is, but that the main good reason to go ahead and do it anyway, is that God invited me first to his table and invited you Dominica. And so he was one big invitation at creation. And then he continued the whole thing through redemption. And then of course, the last supper of the lamb, the marriage supper of the lamb, again, it's around the table, right? And so God's really his whole great love story is an invitation to his table. Mm -hmm. And so when we invite to our tables, no matter how small or scuffed up, or we're having pizza on the carpet or whatever it is, when we invite, we are in a sense, we have the privilege of, of representing the same welcome that God gave us. Do you see how big that is? And when I figured that out, I have not stopped talking about it since because that, you know how they say in business that you need to know your why, mm -hmm. uh, why you keep going, because that is what will get you over, you know, up to hundred episodes because you go, well, wait, I know this is significant. So the why behind hospitality is you have the opportunity to invite someone to the table of God. I mean, not that my table is godlike, but the idea is they may hear about Jesus for the first time in their lives, just sitting around a noisy table with my kids and my husband who doesn't talk, but he will, if you ask him a question, um, he, he, they may sense something. I, I think um, the Bible talks about being the aroma of Christ and Oswald Chambers talks about, you know, that we are poured out and broken bread for him. And I just think what an opportunity we have. Oh, one more thing too. Here's the, another reason is that um, we don't have to go to seminary or teach a Bible study or write a book or do a podcast to share the good news. We just have to open our doors, you know, and anybody, anybody can learn to do that. And so that's a big why behind I, why I do it and why I've written a course and, and why I talk about it incessantly. I mean, I would think people would get tired of it, but I really keep seeing that how important it is because people are lonely, Dominica, yeah. in every season of life, especially during COVID. I mean, my husband said, wow, an opportunity not to have company because he's such a strong introvert, <laughs> but um, I don't think he gets lonely, but most people do. It's because he works with people all day, but um, most people do. And they, it's a shame. There's a shame with loneliness that you don't have with solitude. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all need solitude, but we invite solitude because we need it, but we never invite loneliness. Mm -hmm. And if I can break up someone's loneliness for one hour in their week or their month or even their year, I feel like I can go to heaven, you know, because I've already done something to help them realize that they are not alone, that God is noticing them. I mean, there are people next door on either side. Sorry, I hit my mic. 
who have been to my home. I have wine nights because women seem to congregate around wine and we ask conversation starters and they have both, I mean, one texted last month when I did it immediately that night, I so needed to be with other women. Hmm. So that's why I'm sorry. It was a long answer, but that I just can't stop saying how important it is and that we can all do it. Even if we've never, ever done it, we can do it. And that's why I give steps in my books on how to get started and stuff like that. It's incredible how you speak so openly and, and you mean it about truly inviting people over, come on over, just come on over. And I remember <laughs> you told me this beautiful story. I, I believe it was Thanksgiving when you had so I think it was one of your daughter's friends come over for Thanksgiving and you didn't even know this person. You're like, just come on over. It's great. There's plenty. Just come on over. And I love that about you. I wish I lived closer because I would yeah. come on over. <laughs> yeah. I wish you did too. I'll tell you a good story. Uh, I noticed I was eight months pregnant with my second and I was sitting in church and back in the day we had a choir and I noticed this lady up in the choir and I didn't know her like as a friend, I was just acquainted with her, but I did know her two best friends, amazingly enough, had both moved their families that week. Wow. And I thought, I bet Suzanne is lonely. I bet she's feeling a little bereft. I mean, if your two best friends moved in the same week out of state, you know, not just the next county. And so I made a point to go up to her after church and I go, Suzanne, would you like to come uh, for lunch? Like right now, except you can only stay an hour because I have to paint the kitchen. I have to paint the kitchen before this baby comes out. And so she still tells that story because she thinks it's so funny that I told her she could only stay an hour. So she came for an hour, but I enjoyed her story because I didn't know her. You know, you ask people their stories and then you get to know them a little bit mm. and found out she was born in Ireland and that her dad was a woodworker and that she actually liked to do handyman things. So she went home and changed her clothes and came back and helped me paint the kitchen. Wow. And then she, she was divorced and mother of one and that she and her daughter started coming for Thanksgiving and then Christmas Eve and now Christmas morning for the last, well, Bethany, my middle daughter is going to be 30. So for the last 30 years, they've been part of our families and um, we're still praying for that single gal to get married and they're on the Christmas list. You know, they're on the spreadsheet of, of the Donaldson's Christmas list because they know aunt Kelly, they call her aunt Kelly and their daughter, Heather buy them gifts and we get, give them gifts. But the point is scripture says that he places the lonely in families and we need to look out for those singles. You know, they're not used to being single. They were married once or they need support. They need to know what it's like to be in a crazy noise family like ours. And so it's been a blessing, a double blessing, but that's just one example of just, I call it having your hospitality antenna, where you kind of have to adjust it every morning and go, okay, Lord, this is my to-do list. Like I have them all over my desk here, but what do you really want me to do? Is mm -hmm. it to invite that person over that I see walking by every morning, knowing that his wife died seven months ago? Will I make lasagna? crock pot lasagna today and then take half of it over to his house. There's different ways to do hospitality. But the idea is that you have a mindset, not just of service, Lord, how can I serve you? But specifically, who needs your invitation today, Lord? And then you allow him to adjust your antenna. Wow. Just being open just being yeah. open and noticing. Oh, yeah. I love, I love that term. Just noticing as our dear friend, Lisa Lewis says, are you noticing today? What are we noticing? Yeah. Because when great. we take the time to notice opportunities present itself and we just have to say, okay, Lord, yes, I hear you. Totally. I hear you. I hear We're going to do this. Hopefully I'll obey, but I don't know. Yeah. I try. Sue, let me ask you this. What would you say to another woman who wants to, who wants to invite guests, who wants to open their home for good conversation and happy smiles and all that, but is just not feeling quote unquote ready. What would you say to, to a woman listening? Well, I would say that you start simple. Mm. You don't invite the whole choir. You invite one choir member. You don't invite the whole soccer team, though that can be easier, of your kids, but you invite one parent of one of your kids' friends 
or what we used to do was we invited our kids teachers after school when they were in elementary school Aww. and they you know you don't have to talk because your little child will do all the entertaining and she'll feel so proud that you had your teacher over and you just serve Pepperidge Farm cookies they're very good full of butter and you don't have to make something homemade people get uptight because they don't like to cook or they feel insecure because of Pinterest. It used to be we were insecure because of Martha Stewart, but now it's because of Pinterest. And there's always someone who's a better cook than I am. And so then that would make me stop doing it. But if I knew I could serve Pepperidge Farm cookies and a cup of tea made in the microwave, I might more readily do it. If I thought, this is what I put on my, my, I have a hospitality Facebook group, which I want to invite everybody to. It's called Welcome Heart, Welcome Home. But I put on there the other day that Jesus didn't say, come unto me and I will give you 12 place settings uh, for silver and dishes and matching napkins. No, I will give you rest is what I will give you. And so he's inviting <laughs> us to his table and we need to have rest. And we got a kind of a kick out of it, but it's true. We put those burdens of expectations on ourselves. My sister, who's a great hostess, she told me once, because I asked her, why wouldn't you do hospitality on any given day? And she goes, well, the time she had four young kids, she goes, Sue, because I know I can make a really darn good homemade um, lemon meringue pie, but I don't have time today because of my children or whatever was going on. So I just won't invite since I don't want to, since I can't do it the way I know I could. So see, that was putting, she knew that about herself. She goes, I want to serve appetizers on the deck, but I don't have the time or the energy or the money. And so that would keep me from it. So do it simply. Secondly, do it small. Like I said, you don't invite everybody. Third, do it with a friend. Ask someone, you know, we all have friends. Hopefully we all have at least one person that we can tell our deepest secrets to. And we can say our secret is, I really want to learn to become a woman of welcome. I think Jesus wants me to. Mm -hmm. I think this friend over here is lonelier than I am, but I'm scared. Would you do it with me? Mm -hmm. And when my kids were, when I spoke at a mops a couple of years ago, this gal raised her hand at the end and she goes, so I have four children. Should I wait till they're all out of the nest before I uh, have people over? I go, absolutely not. I said, this is when you need it. You're lonely. So you have the other people over with their small children and the house will be a disaster anyway. So it doesn't matter how you prepare, but I would have a one or two of these girlfriends of mine. I still do that. Even with my, my kids gone, I'll have people over that I know can comfortably talk to newcomers. So I like, you know, the, the biblical definition of hospitality is to invite strangers. And so normally we think it's just to get together for a drink with people that we love and we just haven't seen for a while, but it's actually to invite strangers. So that can be even more intimidating. So if we invite, even some of our relatives are strangers and you know, the holidays are coming up and we just need help the holidays. I'll be, there's a blog coming out in the Joyful Life. I do a blog writing for them too, on hosting your family for the holidays Ooh. and five, five tips to get you through that. And I shouldn't say it that way to get you through that, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, we can be nicer to other people than we can to our own family. So uh, neither here nor there, but if you do it with a friend, they can handle like my mom. I loved my mom. I mean, she's in heaven now, but she would drive me crazy. And so when she would come, I would always have a tea party because she loved my girlfriends because they just doted on on her and they listened to her stories that I had heard a hundred times. So I was co-hosting with friends I trusted. They were blessed. They loved my mom. We felt it was our job for one another to love each other's moms and help us love them well. And so just to have a friend there, in fact, I would panic if sometimes they couldn't come because I thought they are like my anchor hosts. Mm. So choose a friend, ask the Lord for a friend. Would you host? Oh, my mom used to co-host with my aunt. And I really didn't know that's what she was doing. Every Sunday, we would either go to my aunt's for roast beef in the crock pot or our house for two chickens on time bake in the blue roaster. And so, and then whoever was new at church that morning, they would invite them. And so we grew up in that environment 
And I asked, I interviewed my mom actually for that first workshop. And she said, oh yeah, we were just practicing because we loved each other. You know, her sister-in-law was her best friend. And so we just practiced because we could pool the food and the conversation. Aunt Joy was a little quieter than my mother. So mom probably did the inviting of the strangers, but one Sunday they would be at Aunt Joy's or one Sunday at my parents. And I find, Dominica, that this is the biggest reason people do not do hospitality. It's because they weren't raised that way. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons we need to do it today is so that our children will be raised that way. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I have to tell you just yesterday I was in the grocery store and I had my mask on and I'm, I'm doing, doing my shopping. And from like across the produce aisle, I see this woman looking at me and all I can see is eyes and she's looking at yes. me and I kind of look at her. I'm like, Hmm, do I, do I know you? And now that I'm out in the Boulder, Colorado area, I don't know a lot of women, right? but, but I started this online moms group of local moms. There was a real need for it. And I Good just, for you. Right, I had to create the community because I was feeling really lonely. Um, so I, I created the, the community in my small little area and there's, there's 50 women in it. And this woman, just wow. kept, yeah, this woman just kept looking at me like, what? So finally, and I only swear, Sue, I only did this because I knew we were going to get on this podcast. <laughs> I was like, what would Sue do in this situation? Oh, sweet. So I got up the nerve and I walked all the way across the produce section. And I said, hi. And her name happened to be Susan. It's like, hi, are you Susan? She's like, are you Dominica? Wow. And oh, it was wow. this really sweet. And so we set up a play date. It was like, this is amazing. So I don't know if you realize the immense impact that you have just in talking about these seemingly simple ideas that just invite, just say hello, just mm-hmm. have these simple interactions where you don't have to be perfect. My hair was all disheveled. I hadn't taken a shower. It was like, I look disgusting, but I'm going to go say hello to her just because I think we might know each other. And then it ended up being a super sweet interaction. So thank you for that continued sweet reminder of just, if God calls us and puts it on our heart. And I felt that like you Mm. need to go say hello, just start the conversation. Well, I'm just so proud of you. You're saying you're proud of me, proud of you, not only to reach out to her, but to to start a whole organization because of loneliness. See, you asked me at the beginning, why did you do hospitality? I call it self-serving sanctification. I was lonely. So I, um, I didn't get married till I was 35 Mm -hmm. and I would go into a new community because of a new job and I had to make friends. Um, and so I remember watching people leave the church parking lot one Sunday and I thought, well, I think they like me, but they have not invited me over Mm. for Sunday dinner, which my mother would do if she were here. Mm. And so I invited about five or six women that I admired and liked for a Saturday brunch, because number one, I worked so on weekdays and uh, brunch food was fairly inexpensive. I didn't have a lot of money mm-hmm. and they were delighted to get out of the house because they had small children mm-hmm. and they were kind of amazed I could cook, but I thought, well, I can read, you know? Um, and so even that small thing, by the time I left to go to Brazil four years later, I had about six or seven um, older women who would pour into my life and actually treat me for lunch. I would call them and they, they would just meet me at the drop of a hat, which was such a blessing, but I had to reach out first and that's what you've done. And I want to send you a copy of my printable of 250 conversation starters, Dominica, because I would like you to be able to use those with your group because yeah, a free to you only $7 for everybody else, (laughs) but um, it's a little present because Listen, when we start talking, we start on the surface level. Where do your kids go to preschool or where do your kids, where did you graduate from college or what's your, what is your master's in? I always say, I don't remember. I have three kids. You lose a 25% of your brain with each child. But when you start with a surface question, like, oh, well, why did you move to San Luis Obispo? Cause you know, we're kind of a small town Mm -hmm. and it's kind of unique. If you get to live here, you either work at the university or you do construction or whatever. So I'd like to find out, well, what brought you here? Is it relatives or what? So that's a surface level question, but then you go around the table. And then the second question is, well, how, how have you seen God work in your family this last year? Mm. A little deeper. Now, if they're not Christians or it's a mix, I'll say like last time for wine night, I said, uh, the surface question was, um, who was your hero growing up? And it could be imaginary. Mm. So, or someone who's passed away. So that was the, the, the easier question. And then the 
the deeper question was, um, what new thing are you going to try out these next six months that will make you a hero? Oh, so that oh, good was a little deeper because then some people got a, a very introspective, like, oh, I need a coach. I go, well, I can give you one. And, um, and then two people were talking about how their grandmothers raised them because they had toxic relationships with their dads. Mm. See, and I had no idea, but it wasn't, but people didn't know each other. These were 11 women, half of which were brand new to me even. And, and I don't think it was the wine. I think it was the <laughs> questions. <laughs> yeah, I think it was the question. So what we do, we don't try to get invasive. We try to be inclusive. And when you go a little bit deeper, it takes away your loneliness. Mm. When you feel heard, you feel loved. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's what we all want. Is it not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it not? Is it not? And we're called He's simple in his directions. He says, love me and love others, but it's not easy. Mm. It's not easy. And so my books and my podcast and everything are just to make us more aware. Thank you for sharing. Incredible. You're just amazing, Sue. I didn't know like half of this. So how did I not know this? This is such a fun opportunity. What do holidays look like in your house? It's interesting. I married extreme introvert, like I mentioned. And the man in plaid, right? The man in plaid. He wears plaid mostly. Yes. And he told me that he only, his parents only had company maybe one time and they had five kids. And as I said, we had a company a lot, so it's hard on him still, mm -hmm. but we've been married 34 years. Can't remember something like that. And early on, there was a stress between it. Cause I didn't want to overwhelm him. He's busy, but I also felt he needed stretching mm -hmm. <laughs> and my kids needed to have people over, you know, I knew the value. And so what I told him was the holidays are mine. So the other type of company, like if I invite someone for dinner, I usually, usually ask his input first. Like, is it okay if we have the family over this week? <laughs> is it a good week for you? But holidays are mine. And so he just has gotten used to it. And he's really good talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. He just gets overwhelmed when there's 50 for the Christmas Eve soup potluck. But early on, because he's a physician, he couldn't get away for Christmas. And that was really hard on me. Mm. And so I noticed that there were other people in town who did not have extended people, like where you're at right now, Dominica, your folks are not around you. Whereas mine have never, I've never had brothers or sisters or my parents here in this town. And so I noticed there are other families like that too. So I invited two families to begin with actually as many as I could, but these two basic families have come every Christmas Eve and then they are allowed to invite anybody else. And it's called Christmas Eve soup and bread potluck. Awesome. And some, uh, it's so easy. I mean, yeah. I basically make soups in the crock pots. I collect them at thrift stores. So I have five crock pots and I make three soups just to make sure that there are enough. Cause I never know how many people are coming and I'll invite people off the street in the grocery store and at the Christmas Eve service who have no plans. Wow. Can you imagine having no plans and you're a single person? And I just said, hey, I don't know if you're doing something because you don't want to assume. But if you're free, I'm having people in for a soup and bread potluck right now. And you don't need to bring a thing because everybody always brings so many soups or bread. <laughs> <laughs> and one friend didn't cook. So she brought an appetizer, which we now adore. So she has to come every year, bacon wrapped dates with the pits out. And so now our kids, like last year was hard because of COVID. We only had Suzanne and her daughter and a couple others who weren't allowed to travel mm -hmm. because of COVID. So they, we only had like nine or 10, but we have had between 35 and 50 every year. Wow. So that's just Christmas Eve, but then I want to protect our family. So we just have our own family and Suzanne and Heather on Christmas morning <laughs> and, and Christmas morning, unless there's a boyfriend in the picture. And sometimes there isn't, sometimes there isn't, <laughs> not mine, my girls. So, um, so, and then Thanksgiving, same thing. You can invite anybody. They can't all stay here. I have a big house, but I want my kids to feel comfortable, mm -hmm. but I do have friends who offer their homes. If people come who can't afford a hotel. Incredible. I, I can't even imagine that growing up it's for fun. me. It sounds amazing. <laughs> Holidays for me were very much just like just the immediate family. 
you know, maybe the extended family visit for an hour. And then it was oh, just, wow. just the family. And so just this idea of, especially now where I am being a little isolated, I think about having the friends giving, right. Opening it up and just saying, yes. Hey, come on, come all bring something. Don't whatever there's soup, just come hang out. Just, you have a place to be. I would love, I would love to start doing something like that. Well, I have several soup recipes on my blog that you can check (laughs) because I am a simple cook. And what's been fun is like, I met this gal who was new to the area. Her husband had just retired from the air force. And so they didn't know anybody. Right. Mm -hmm. So we became fast friends and then she's an only child. And so she was taking her boys back to see her parents in Virginia or someplace for Thanksgiving, but her husband was a pilot. So he was on call. So the day of Thanksgiving, I get a text from her and she goes, Chris didn't get a call. Can he come over to your house? for Thanksgiving. And I said, sure. And we'd never met him. And now, you know, we're all friends, but that was so cute. And then, then, then for Christmas Eve soup potluck, her parents came out, of course, to see them and they came. So I met her for the first time when they walked in the door. Oh my so gosh. It's, it's really, How amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. We expect to see them this year. In fact, their son, his birthday is Christmas Eve. So oh. we always make a chocolate cake for Jesus because that's his favorite for his birthday. Oh, of course. And we stop everybody because it's really hard to, you know, get everybody quieted down. But I am, I was an English teacher of high school students. So I managed to do that. And then I said, okay, we're going to sing happy birthday to Jesus. But, and then we sing happy birthday to Michael. because <laughs> Oh, I can oh. tell you what, oh, what, the Lord keeps you from near disasters, though sometimes they still happen. I had the birthday cake for Jesus. This was two years ago, or maybe three. And it was a layer cake, which I rarely make, but you know, he deserves something special. Sure. And it was on a pedestal plate. And when I picked it up and I sort of go like this while we're all singing, you know, there's 50 people singing. I noticed that the glue had come unstuck from the pedestal to the plate. Oh, and no. so I just was able to set it down and this people, you know, I thought the whole cake would have been like that, which would have been memorable. Yes. <laughs> but I was still glad. And then my daughter's like filming me, you know, everything's on, on uh, of course, Instagram yeah. nowadays. So anyway, that was a near disaster, but that's just one holiday, but that's the main one. Wow. So what does it look like in opening our homes, hospitality during this COVID era? Do you have mm-hmm. any tips or recommendations on how we can still do this while being safe and following guidelines yeah. and all that? Well, it's easier for me because I'm in California. Mm -hmm. My sister is outside Chicago. And she said, Sue, I just can't get a heater that will warm us enough for an outdoor patio gathering. Mm -hmm. Because I was trying to encourage her to keep doing it because she's a real extrovert and needed the fellowship herself. Mm -hmm. So, um, and also she's a pastor's wife, you know, so people need to see the pastor. So um, she just couldn't do it as much. Whereas I did, even though it was chilly here, it's still cold at night. I had my dear husband, I bought some of those cute outdoor lights. He built this triangle thing with plywood. I thought he was just going to hang it in the tree, but he just built, because he was an Eagle Scout, he made it quite involved. And so it's still hanging in our tree. And then there's this darling shabby chic chandelier, which I'd bought at a store that was going out of business and it was hanging in our garage and it's not, you know, there's light bulbs in it, but nothing's hooked up. So that's hanging in the middle. And then we just bring chairs around and invite people outside. So that's what I did for bigger groups. That's where we had our Thanksgiving outdoors. That's where we had Easter outdoors. It was a little chilly Thanksgiving. And so we did come inside after we ate and answered questions around. Oh, we invited this great server from a bar downtown. And I said, Dimitri, where are you going for Thanksgiving? He goes, no, I didn't ask him. I just said, would you, we just loved him. So I said, would you like to come for Thanksgiving? He looked at me, he goes, yeah. He was a, a Cal Poly student. And so he even brought hors d'oeuvres. It was so darling. And oh. no one had met him except for Mark and me. And he came in and then we did the conversation starters. And then later I said, so where are you from? He goes, oh, Roy Grande. I go, then why are you here? That's 20 minutes south. Yeah. I said, why are you here? Like your parents? He goes, oh, well, I'm just going to eat twice today. I just wanted to come. <laughs> That says a lot to your character, Sue. It's just, it it's like hilarious. Wow. How incredible. Yeah. Why are so, you here? Because I yeah. like you. Why? I want to be. Yeah. 
wanted to be part of the party and he was moving to san francisco and i have two daughters up there so he was going to stay in touch and make some friends so that was wow. good i have to mention that when we first started the conversation for you to come on tuesday tea you sent me a note that i'd like to read may i oh, sure i don't remember it you wrote to me i feel like if we had an accurate view of god and an accurate view of ourselves the most of life's problems could at least be mitigated and because we have a similar passion to bless others, I mean, that's huge. That is, that's like such a profound, when I, I had to read it three times, like, wow, if we had, listen, if we had an accurate view of God and an accurate view of ourselves, that most of life's problems could at least be mitigated. Exactly. Whoa. Well, we can't solve all of life's problems. I can't solve what's going on in politics or with the pandemic. But to know that God loves me and is in control, that's an accurate view of him. To know that I'm worthy of his love, that he sent his son on the cross to die for me, that's an accurate view of me. Mm. See, if I know I'm loved, I don't have to be insecure. That's, that's huge. Most people are insecure. And that keeps us from being hospitable because we're afraid of what people think of us. But if we already know that God loved us enough to die for us, well, that kind of opens up the whole door thing, you know, where we can constantly, in fact, this is the main thing about hospitality versus entertaining. I've just sort of figured this out that entertaining is still beautiful. I love to be entertained. I love good food and all that stuff. I like the 12 place settings as long as I don't have to iron the napkins, but the focus of entertaining is often the hostess or the host. And to, it's kind of like, you know, here I am. Mm -hmm. And the focus of hospitality is the guest. And that's what God does for us. He's focused on me. Mm -hmm. I'm his guest. And then the purpose of entertaining is often to impress. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of hospitality is to serve. So your guest may only need a glass of water, or they might need an hour of your time, or they might need your guest bed. Mm -hmm. But what we do is we say to the Lord, how can I serve this guest as if he or she were you? Mm -hmm. Thank you for these incredible reminders and insights into just how we navigate our lives and how we can continue to invite, invite it in and just give the best parts of ourselves to people who really need it too. And they so. don't know how greatly loved they are. Yeah. And you noticing that woman in the produce department probably made her day. And the fact that you're hosting 50 online, that's going to turn into something. God is so proud of you. Oh, thank you. I re I feel that in my heart. I do. I had my first, my first event. We all met at a park. It was very sweet. Everyone brought their kids, nice outdoor event. It was potluck style, right? So super yes. simple. And it was incredible to see these women jump into action and help me clean up and to help everyone just, you know, when you have found your tribe, when everyone's working right. together, you know, exactly. and it's, it's such a cool experience. So thank you for being a very large inspiration for just me basically stepping into my full role, my full potential to make this happen. It's been a journey. Well, Sue, thank you. I wish that I could just talk to you all afternoon, but I want to be respectful of your time and our listeners time. What is the best way that people can get in contact with you if they want to follow Welcome Heart and the podcast and all that? Thank you for that opportunity. Just go on to my blog, welcomeheart.com. You'll see the homepage was designed by Dominica. So at the very bottom, you can click to subscribe. And when you do, you'll get several good recipes and tips for hospitality just for subscribing because it's called How Do I Do Hospitality If I Don't Cook? I'm not sure when this is going to be broadcast, but pretty soon you'll get an opportunity to receive a hundred things I learned from 100 podcasts. So my podcast is make it count living a legacy life. But Dominica, I don't know if you know that I did purchase an app. So if, if people just want my app, 
besides, you know, instead of using Spotify or iTunes, it's Make It Count Legacy. So just go to the app store and it's free. And that's kind of cool. And my kids go, why'd you do that, mom? I go, I don't know. I just thought it was cool. And so I did it. And what I do is I interview people and ask them, what legacy are you living right now? to uh, pass on to those you know and love. So it's, it's not like things like rocking chairs and good silver, but it's things that matter building into people and into God's word. So, and then, so I blog at welcomeheart.com and I think that's all. Oh, my shop. Oh, and then the, I gave you, I'm giving all your listeners something. Do you want me to talk about that now? Sure. Yes. Sue is giving us an incredible gift. Listen up. (laughs) Oh, thank you. Um, Yeah. There I'm giving you a recipe. I probably got out of a mystery. I love to read uh, mystery books and especially ones that have recipes and, and it's a hospitality prayer as well, because I think it starts with, I loved your question earlier, Dominica, where you said, if someone's listening who really wants to do this, but is just not sure how to begin, will you begin with this prayer? And that will give you the courage to take the next step because it's basically, it's like podcasting brick by brick, step by step, learning what the next thing and then doing it. So there's a prayer, there's a recipe. And then free of charge, I'm giving, gifting your listeners, if they're into mentoring, if they want to start meeting with an older woman or start meeting with a younger woman, we all know people on both sides. And whatever we learn, we like to pass on. And that's who you are. That's who I am. And so these are 10 worksheets that I designed that come free when you buy the book, but I'm just gonna, uh, but I also sell them separately. And it's to give you, um, it's basically to empower you to meet with someone because it's just basic things like, what do you talk about on the first time you meet together? Mm -hmm. Or how do you lead a Bible study? Or what do you do next? Or how do you develop a personal growth plan for the person that you're meeting with? So those are free for your listeners today. And thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. And again, I will be sure to put all the links in the show notes. Sue, thank you, thank you, thank you. And for everyone listening and watching, that is it for this week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss an episode. And if you'd like to connect with me directly, follow me on Instagram, where you'll get daily business tips and continued encouragement. See you there.